see me wearing my scarf. It's so cold in this building. All right, so what I'm talking about here, we're going to be talking a little bit about, we're rolling? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be talking a little bit about campaigns today, but before this, we were talking a little bit about um, the current context of our country, which is, you know, the shots for uh, COVID and all that, and civil liberties, and what if America, uh, the government, decides to require passports or cards of sorts, like the shot passports uh, or identification cards that say uh, you got your shots. And if you don't have that, you're not allowed to get on airlines or you're not allowed to do certain things or go certain places. And that brings up a couple problems, uh, civil rights issues such as uh, privacy uh, rights and you know what, what do you, corporations such as your your place of business or airlines or the government for that matter uh, what business of it is it of theirs that they should know your private uh, medical history and there's some privacy issues there then there are also the first amendment issues of your uh, rights to free conscience that is uh, your religious rights, your religious freedoms, are, you, are those being violated because there are certain religious groups who do not like medical treatment and certain medical treatments. And so they would object to being forced to getting shots or any medical treatment, Christian scientists I gave the example of, and because you know that's part of their religious beliefs. And so if the government forces this upon them, they would be violating their First Amendment right to uh, their freedom of uh, religion, right? The free exercise of their religion. And it would probably constitute a violation of their religion. That is, that is, uh, it's not an establishment of religion of anything, but it is an establishment of something that, that violates their, their free exercise. All right, so that, those are some issues uh, concerning that. Uh, we also moved into, you know, the idea of uh, why would the government uh, force this upon us and there are a couple reasons you can say well the government just cares about people and you know it's for the be better good of society that everybody gets it to protect people um, and well that's a great excuse um, there are others right now who are believing that to force this upon uh, the society uh, mostly the, this is coming from Republicans that believe it, it's a the socialist wing, the Marxist wing of the Democratic Party, who's trying to force Marxism upon our nation. And this is a means of control of the population, that you can control the population by limiting their movement by use of these types of passports and ID cards and say, you must do this or you cannot do that. And then you can continually uh, uh, have lockdowns, shut down businesses, uh, create, um, prevent movement of society, and there's a sense of population control. Now you can see that one side believes that uh, the other side is nefarious in their approach to this, while the other side is going, no, we're just being altruistic, you know, it's all, you know, so to save lives, and of course, you know, they're, you know, then there's a bunch of data that's thrown out and um, by thrown out, I mean they use it to try to prove their points or they just throw it out because they don't want to look at it. And so it's, uh, it's very controversial right now. And there are people who don't want the shot, period. They just don't trust it. A lot of black people do not want the shot. Why? Well, because the Tuskegee experiment, right? Where the black population was used. There were black people who were used. Uh, they were given syphilis and experimented upon and that was a government making use of their power to um, abuse a portion of our society. So why would you why would you trust the government? Okay, to to especially with medicine, right? And so of course that that tips my hand on where I stand on government provided medicine. Uh, well, anyway, then we went on into you know crashing the American economy uh, because that is another thing that the um, that is being thrown out there that uh, 
political opponents, the Republicans especially, believe that the, there are many Democrats who are in, intentionally trying to crash the American economy by destroying uh, it by use of debt, that is, taking on too much debt. So we've heard of all these COVID um, relief packages that give hand out trillions of dollars that have um, to the to our population. Now um, you should get a couple checks here and there, right? And but of course, if you look at the COVID relief bills, the ones that are put through Congress, uh, the Democrats run Congress right now and the presidency, so the Republicans can't stop these bills from going through. And so all these relief bills are going through, adding to the debt. And our debt is, I, I just saw some over a hundred and something trillion dollars, right? Um, which added up to about $800,000 per citizen. That means each American citizen owes $800,000. Then I asked the question, well, that's, a, that's an awful lot of debt for each citizen. And how much money are you going to get out of all these relief bills? Are you getting $800,000? The answer is no. A lot of this money is going overseas to other countries, okay? And what does America get for these? I don't know. I cannot tell you what America gets for spending money that we borrow because it's going to our debt, right? Um, what do we get out of it? How do you, how do you, you know, assess that? So there are those who believe that uh, America is in decline, especially economically. And the goal of this is to, to establish uh, a Marxist, socialist, neo-communistic society, okay? The leaders of which would be people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, Bernie Sanders is one of the types of people in there who, who's been pushing for socialism in America for the longest of times. Kamala Harris is a big socialist Marxist. Uh, the leaders of Black Lives Matter, Marxists, okay? Antifa, Marxists, okay? Some of the major movements in America right now are communist Marxist movements. They walk around literally with hammers and sickles as insignias on the shields that they carry when they go out to riot. So when you see the riots today, tomorrow, and the next day, maybe on into the weekend and, and beyond, after the <clears throat> uh, verdict comes in, whether it's guilty or not guilty of the Siobhan trial, the officer, you know, are you guys paying attention to that one? Whether or not you're not, how about the Minneapolis riots that are going on right now? You start watching the riots, you start looking at what they're wearing, you start looking at the shields that these guys are making, you'll see hammers and sickles all over them, okay? You see that the riots going on in Portland and Washington, they're, you know, these are real communists, okay? So anyway, some people believe that this is the way America is going. Well, we discussed the, um, the $800,000 now that every American's on the hook for of the debt. And I said, well, that, that depends also on how much money is worth because if the greenback, the dollar is, uh, if inflation happens, which it most assuredly will takes place, uh, the dollar becomes less valuable, that means your greenbacks are worth less, so you'll owe more than $800,000. And there doesn't seem to be any stopping on to this borrowing. So what happens when all this happens? Well, the economy crashes, and then our greenbacks, our money, is worthless. So I asked the question, do you know what money is? And I saw people go, yes, yes, yes I know what money is, right? Which prompts me to ask, no, do you really know what money is? And I like, if I said, can you give me some money and you handed me a dollar and somebody handed me a peso, are they the same thing? No. What's different? It's one dollar is worth like around 20 pesos. <laughs> no. Is it 20 pesos? And if, if that's the case, then the peso has either gotten a lot stronger or the dollar's gotten a lot weaker, and I suggest that it... No, that, uh, that really is. It's, is that $1, 20? One dollar is 20 pesos. Okay, because it used to be one dollar was a lot more pesos than that. No, that's how much it is right now, because my parents switched wow. to money. So the pesos... That, and it, sometimes they can go up to 25. Okay, now Maybe that like, sounds, really to you, that may sound like, oh my God, the peso's not worth that much, right? It really is. 
Well, you say it isn't, but you know, uh, back in my day, it was a lot worse for the peso, okay? Which tells me the dollar's gotten a lot weaker. So that tells me to say, what, what are the similarities in them? So let's take 20 pesos and one dollar. Are they equal? Are they the same thing? What do they mean? What is it? What is what is it that we call them both money? Right. You could use them to buy things. Why can you use those pieces of paper or coins, for that matter, to buy things? It's because they represent something. Gold. No. No. <laughs> no, unfortunately, we are not on the gold system anymore. Not in America. We used to. Uh, but, but even then, what would the gold represent? The value of something. What is value? Yeah, that, what, is, what are we talking about? That, that's a value. It is value. It, these the things material. represent value. And so that value had to be created or obtained. Right? So when you go out and you do a service for somebody, let's say I used to clean carpets, okay? And that has a certain level of value. And we'll put a dollar amount on it, just a unit of measurement. And so I go clean this carpet, you give me 150 units. We'll call them dollars, okay? If you wanna times that by 20, that would be 3,000 pesos, okay? Either way, there's a value to it. And those notes represent the value of that work. What happens when you start printing off more and more notes, but you do not produce more and more work? You're not producing more and more value, right? So the paper itself represents less value. See, the paper isn't the value. The paper represents the value created either through the service, such as carpet cleaning, the product that is something I make and sell to you that you could take home, like your clothes, like your, the textile industry is an industry that creates fabrics, right? And then there are people who take that fabric and they make clothes out of it, or there are trees that, that people grow and they've created a product and then they sell that product. If there's more of it, it is worth less because of demand, there's less demand for it. If there's less lumber, it's in higher demand, okay? If people don't need as much, because we don't need houses right now, it's in less demand, okay? Supply and demand, if demand goes down, the value goes down. If demand goes up, the value goes up, okay? If supply goes up and they go up, supply and demand go up evenly, the price, the value stays the same. But money, will represent the value of it. It represents the value of it, okay? So you ha it, money is not, you cannot just print money and it retain the same amount of value, okay? It is relative to the goods and services that it represents, okay? So the goal would be to create paperback, greenbacks, in as much as they um, keep up with production of goods and services. So as long as we are working, we are producing stuff, we are producing value. And thus there's money that would represent that value for me to trade. I can't just go trade carpet cleaning for groceries, okay? I can't just go to HEB, right? And go, I want this carpet, uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, basket full of goods here, and I wanna give you some carpet cleaning. Or in my case now, I wanna teach you some philosophy or some, some government class. They'd be like, no, we, we don't accept that. So they have to accept a common currency, something that represents value that we can all exchange for other goods and services. Because bartering, if you remember what bartering is, is just trading the good for another good, right? You have to go around and go, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll clean your carpet if you give me that chicken, right? And you're like, yeah, I, I got a chicken and I need my carpet cleaned, here you go. But what if you don't need your carpet cleaned? Yes, yeah, sorry, I don't need a carpet clean, I'm, you know? 
You have to figure out how to get, I'd have to still figure out how to get that chicken. So I'd go over to you and I'd go, you need your carpet clean? Go, yeah, I need a carpet clean. I said, well, what do you got that you'll give me? You go, well, I got a, um, hmm, a, a baby calf. And I say, yeah, I'll take that baby calf. I go back over there and you go, you need a baby calf? You go, yeah, I need a baby calf. And I give you the baby calf and you get a chicken. See, there's all this weird stuff getting on. So you create currency. So you can go, okay, I'll give you this as currency, okay? So the government can't just print money. And so when it does and it borrows money, what does that do? It devalues the money that we have. And it takes away from the money that you have in your pocket. Because you have a dollar here and if they print more, it takes the value of that away. Okay, and it gives it to somebody else, somewhere else, maybe another country like we just said. So greenbacks and money are two different things in a sense. Money is the real value. Greenbacks are what it represents. Greenbacks would be the bills. So that is why it's important for the government to not print too much money. That's why it's important for the government to not borrow too much money. Our debt is horrible. And what happens when you owe more money? Well, they're gonna take more money. How do they get the money? The taxes. Well, do you print more, which is a tax? because it's taken from the value in your own pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Or they just say, we're not gonna print more. We're literally gonna take the greenbacks from your pocket. We're gonna raise taxes. Ultimately, they're gonna do both. Is Go that ahead. what was happening whenever they had the coin shortage? shortage? You know how they, they had like a coin so, uh, shortage or something like that, like stores that were like, oh, like if you have like the, okay. No, keep going. Oh, like if you have like the right amount of uh, change, like pay like that, or if not, just pay with card, like don't like, or if you want like round your money. When was this and why? Like this was like a few months ago, like around. They had a and, coin shortage. Yeah, like in the stores, they had like the sign. They were like. Oh, oh that's right. Have... Maybe it was particular stores. I don't know. No, like it was mostly all the stores around. Is it true? Why was I not aware of this? Maybe you don't go shopping or card. Maybe because I don't. Maybe because I only use my card. Yep. Uh, yeah, try not to do that too. But I don't buy a lot of stuff. I've got everything I want. I really do. You know, for me, it's yeah. I got everything. Um, I mean, you go. You got everything. Well, everything I want. You know, <laughs> what do I what do I need to spend more money on? It's just more stuff to put in the house. Um, but yeah, you're probably right. I probably just my, my method of purchasing anything I get is usually a card. I don't, and that's not necessarily a good thing either. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not advocating that. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I can't, no, I don't know why that would have happened. That seems odd to me, especially given that it might be the fact that people have been so used to using their cards that, that businesses just don't have physical money on them. Some places don't take greenbacks, yet on the greenback it says, for all debts, public and private. All debts, public and private. That that is a legal, it's a legal form of tender. It says that on, on the actual document, the greenback, which I do not have on me. And so if somebody refuses that, that seems to me to be illegal to refuse to take a form of payment. I don't know if that's true. But if it says for all debts, right? Well, it, it, they weren't refusing it. It just says like if no, you I have. No, oh. keep going. No, like, I know they're oh, saying we don't like they have were, it. They were just saying that like if you had like the right amount of change, like they basically don't have change. That's right. Yeah. So just pay with your car or like right. have the right amount. Yeah, sure. And I, I know what you're saying. Uh, what I was just suggesting that there are actually companies that just are like we're not okay. we don't do cash if you don't do a card. But I guess that's our. I, I would say that's their right. Um, I don't know. I've, I've wondered about this, right? You come in there and go, oh, sorry, we're not taking that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, where was I? Campaigns, that's, that's what we want to finish, because we're finishing up this. We're going to get into Texas government. Campaigns and elections. Uh, every two years, we're going to have some kind of federal election, right? And that's going to end up being uh, your congressman. Okay, so every two years you're going to have 
uh, some sort of election having to do with uh, the federal congressional you know, elections. And every four years, you'll have the presidential. Now, that's going to be the first Tuesday of the first full week or after Monday. Like, it, you're not going to have um, Tuesday the 1st of November, okay? It will have to come after a Monday. It's kind of weird like that. And so... Um, so that will be the presidential election. Well, why? Because they made it that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> and once they make it that way, that's the way it is, okay? Uh, there may have been a purpose behind it. I'd like to know why myself. That's a great I thought. Um, but, uh, you know, you get this thing called Super Tuesday. So, you know, uh, or as Joe Biden called it, Super Thursday. Guy's been in office his whole life and called it Super Thursday. What day is election day on? Tuesday. 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 Okay. All right, so, um, so every four years you got an election of the president, okay? And then, so every two years uh, is Congress, but it's not always the House of Representatives, right? It's also what? Senators, but senators are not what is their term of office? It's not two, and it is not four. It is six. Senators have six-year terms. All right? Remember, 25, you have to be, right? 30 to be a senator, and 35 to be the president. Those are your ages. And it's two, four, and six two years for the for the uh, House, four years for the President, six years for the Senate. And these guys are gonna be there six years. And so they, and then, so how many senators are there per uh, state? Mm -hmm. Two. And so um, what they do is they stagger the elections. So who are, are in the great state of Texas, who are our current senators? John Cornyn, right? And Senator Ted Cruz, right? Theodore Cruz, all right? And so they, uh, who was just up for election during this last uh, cycle two years ago? Every one of the federal congressmen, right? And one of our senators, which senator? Ted Cruz, no. no. Ted Cruz was before that, when he ran, when Beto O'Rourke, Robert Francis O'Rourke, who has used the Hispanic nickname Beto, right? He's not Hispanic. Uh, Robert Francis O'Rourke ran against Ted Cruz and they poured, the Democratic Party from outside poured millions and tens of millions of dollars to try to defeat Ted, Ted Cruz so that they could turn the great state of Texas from red to blue. They failed. Okay. Uh, John Cornyn was the last one. He, he won his election. So what two parties are representing or what party or parties are representing Texas in the Senate? They are both Republicans. Okay. Ted Cruz and John Cornyn. All right. Go ahead. Why wouldn't they like have one Republican and one Democrat to oppose them? Because we vote. And, and we vote to determine that. And if, if it works out that way, because the people vote to determine what kind of leadership they want in the House and the Senate, right? And if we wanted, as a group of people in Texas, to have a Democratic leader, uh, then we would. Now, keep in mind, remember, we're talking about two different belief systems here, right? What, are the, what, what do the Democrats want? Well, they're pro-choice. That means they're pro-abortion, okay? They are, they generally have different views on gun control. They generally would like to see what they call, quote, common sense gun control, which means 
Ultimately, they want to do away with the Second Amendment. Some of them do. Others just want to get rid of certain types of weapons such as AR-15s and stuff like that, okay? Okay? Uh, but Republicans, on the other hand, don't want to get rid of those things. They, and they're pro-life and they're pro-religion. Okay, you see where we're going with this. They got two different platforms. And so you just don't go, well, we'll make one of each, right? No, no, no. You let the people decide what representatives they want. And in the great state of Texas, the representatives we've chosen as far as senators goes is we have chosen to have Republicans, okay? It doesn't mean we're a pro-choice, uh, pro-life state. We've got the largest abortion facility down the road on uh, I-59, right down by U of H. Okay, it's the largest in the nation, I think. Um, it's Planned Parenthood. Uh, so, that's why. We choose. You know, it's not written in the Constitution. It's written by the people, okay, who choose who their representatives are. So now we have, uh, you know, in a few years, uh, Joe Biden's already been in the presidency for about six months now. And uh, so three and a half years from now, okay, he'll, uh, he'll be up for election again if he's still in office, if he's not removed or um, steps down or whatever, right? Uh, so here we're coming up on about a year and a half from now, there'll be another election. And that election in Texas will not have, I don't think Ted Cruz, maybe Ted Cruz will be up for uh yeah, he may actually be up for re-election again this time. Okay, or is it six years? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I could be wrong though. Maybe it's another two years. Nonetheless, uh, all of our all of our congressmen, the House of Representatives, they'll all be up for re-election again. Okay. What will happen? Well, the goal will be for the Republicans to get more seats in the House of Representatives and overtake the majority of, uh, you know, House Republicans to, you know, to House Democrats so that they will have more power, that they will be in charge of committee appointments, right? Who, who will head, chairs the committees? And that is a very powerful position so that you introduce legislation Right, you determine what legislation gets uh, even looked at, not just passed, but looked at. Uh, the um, the leadership of the House, right, uh, will change from Nancy Pelosi probably to Kevin McCarthy, uh, Representative McCarthy perhaps, and um, the, he'll be the Speaker of the House if this takes place. If not, but the goal of the Democrats is to retain, retain the majority in that, uh, in the House. Uh, the same thing will go on in the Senate. The, the, right now there's 50 Republicans to 50 Democrats and Kamala Harris being the vice president who is the head, uh, the president of the Senate is the tiebreaker. She's a Democrat that gives the Democrats the lead by one vote. Uh, the Republicans, their goal will be to take back the Senate majority, okay? So that the majority leadership will not be split amongst Chuck Schumer and uh, Mitch McConnell, okay? That it will be given to the, uh, the true leader, whoever, whomever that will have the majority. Okay, so how does all this take place? You have to run for office and you have to win. How does this work? What do you have to do? I know. Campaign. Campaign. Do you just campaign or do you have to get on into the election? You have to get into the election. How? But how do people choose? Or like, no, no. No. Well, there's a process, right? You got to go like, you literally got to, you know, there are a couple ways. First, you could be a write-in. Like if I wanted to be elected, I could go out there and campaign and say, look guys, I'm not on the ballot, but I'd like you to write my name on there, okay? How do you get on the ballot though? That's the real question. You gotta be on the ballot. I mean, if, you, if you're gonna you know, take it seriously. And each 
you know, and you got to go figure out the rules of the game. And there are rules of the game, right? Federal Election Commission has a rule of the game. Some states, because the states, the, the Constitution determines, right, how, who runs elections. Who runs elections? The states. The states are responsible for running their own elections and putting their people on the ballot the, and putting up the requirements for the people. So the, some, some of them require a little money. Uh, they do require money, and some of them require some... Uh, a number of signatures that so you get a number of like a petition okay and then you get put on the ballot and that's a very hard thing to get right or you could actually another way is to win the primary of your party and that way what you do is you go to your party and you run as a primary contender what is a primary like the first person mm -hmm. that well, the word primary just means first, right? I mean, yeah, pri for primarily, you know, beforehand, right? And yeah, that is kind of in a general term what the word means. But we're talking about what's a primary election when you hear the primaries. So, uh, so let's imagine, you know, when you go to um, vote for, let's say, this is just go with the president, okay? It, this is actually true for congressmen too, all right? Uh, let's say you go to the president, you're going to vote for president. And usually what we assume is it's going to be the Republican against the Democrat. You'll notice that I use the word Republican singular and Democrat singular, not Republicans versus Democrats, right? Now there may be an independent thrown in there too, okay? And that's happened. I'll, um, you know, Ross Perot. Well, what you got to do to become the Republican or the Democrat is you run in a primary against other Republicans or other Democrats, right? And so during the primary elections, imagine all the way back to 2016, if you will, or even this last one. Let's just go with this last, last one in 2020, okay? And uh, in the Democratic primary, you had a bunch of people running, right? You had... Um, Gosh, well, yeah, Joe Biden is one. You had Kamala Harris is another. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. You had, um, there were several, 16 or more, I think, weren't there? Uh, and, and so they're all raising money and they're all touring America going, I want you to vote for me in the primary because I want to run for president against Donald Trump. Okay? They're all running as Democrats. And they want to represent the Democratic Party. And so, of course, uh, Kamala Harris, you know, she dropped out very early. She couldn't get really any money. I mean, she was having a hard time raising any money. Uh, so she dropped out. And then I can't remember who, Bernie Sanders was one of the last ones to drop out. Uh, there was another one who looks like the basketball, the small eyes. Small eyes. Yeah. He, 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 he has a, a Chinese name. So he's Chinese, Chinese, you're saying he was Asian. Yeah, he's Asian. Andrew Yang. No. Yeah. Okay. He's another socialist. He believes that everybody should get what's called universal income, that the government should give everybody a check wow. for not working. All right. Okay, where do you get this money from? Uh, for, the for the people who are working. Right. So that's yeah, so they take it from you and give it to it's kind of like this, we're going to take from the rich and give to the poor, but the reality is you just take from everybody and give to the lazy. Okay? And then when people stop working, you don't have products anymore, right? You could have greenbacks that are worthless because they can't buy anything. That's what happened in that's what happened in the Soviet Union. You couldn't buy anything because nothing was made. They had money, they just had no products. And what I mean by that is they had rubles. Okay, but that's going back earlier. Let's talk about the campaign now. So you have to win this election, this primary to represent your party. So Joe Biden, who lost in Iowa, if I'm correct, and they were like, how is Joe Biden gonna pull this one out? And they really thought he was gonna, they really thought he was gonna lose it. How he won it is still kind of a mystery, all right? I'm not suggesting any shenanigans went on. Maybe I am, but uh, I didn't trust it during the primary. I thought there was something a bit weird going on. 
okay, I can't say what, but I do did think that, wow, he was down, and then he somehow pulled it out. And by the way, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, they caught Hillary Clinton. They caught the DNC pulling for Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. They caught the DNC cheating for one Democrat over the other, okay? Uh, in the pr primary, pri that was going to go... It's not saying that Bernie Sanders would have won. Maybe he wouldn't. Okay? But they busted him, okay? And um, wouldn't be surprised if it happened again a little, okay? I mean, Bernie Sanders is a real deal socialist. He's like, he, he really believes in that stuff, okay? Is he the equal citizen thing? Yeah, he's, well, he's kind of, again, he's a, he's, he's a Marxist, a real Marxist. He's got a real solid following called the Bernie Bros, okay? And they are real communists, okay? They really want to see that happen in America. Um, well, so anyway, uh, turns out Joe Biden ends up winning, and because Joe Biden wins the popular vote among his constituents, the Democrats, right? They determined who they wanted to represent their party right and the majority of them turned out to want to you know have joe biden as their representative over kamala harris andrew yang beto o'rourke uh and the like okay hillary clinton didn't throw her hat in the ring this time okay i think she probably took the hint okay she wasn't gonna make it okay donald trump was not primaried he was the incumbent he was the president so that nobody ran against donald somebody could have like if ted cruz says i'm gonna run against donald trump and i when i say nobody did somebody did but it was inconsequential i mean they, they i don't even think their name would ever got any recognition okay but it just automatically goes to him all right so donald trump uh, uh ted cruz let's say he he wanted to primary pretend he did could have mounted a primary and then Donald Trump would have had to run against Ted Cruz and win the primary to again represent the Republicans. That didn't happen. He just represented the Republican Party as the incumbent. The incumbent is the one who is already in office, okay? The incumbent usually has a really good advantage over those who, who are not um, incumbents. They've got name recognition. Uh, they have a record they can stand on. Hopefully it's not so bad. They are, uh, they're not, they're not exhausted from campaigning in a primary. They're not, you know, they, they haven't exhausted their funds from the primary, only all that stuff. Anyway, you get money from your party once, once you win the primary. That's one way to get on the ballot is to win the primary. That's what I'm telling you, okay? Um, and then there are the other ways, the logistic, uh, the, the, the uh, um, administrative ways, like I said, and get your name on. And other people do, and they'd be running as independents, not as that particular party, if that makes sense to you. If you want to represent your party, you've got to go through the party. Does that make sense? Has anybody ever, like, won the primaries that wasn't in the party? Yeah, Donald Trump. Mm. I mean... Donald Trump ran as a Republican. And one of the people, one of the, well, your professor here was like, he's not a Republican. I was like, how are people voting for this guy? He's not a real Republican. Cause I, you know, I'm, I believed he was pro choice. I believed he was pro same sex marriage, which I think he kind of not can care less about. I, I, I can care less about it. Okay. Um, so I just believed he was a wolf in sheep's clothing, okay? He turned out to be the most Republican president I think we've ever had. He promised to uh, uphold the, the Republican values, to um, uh, nominate conservative judges he did. He promised to be tight on the border wall and, you know, all that stuff and, and lower federal uh, corporation taxes, corporate income taxes, he said all these things and he did all these things. And of course they call him a liar because he's kind of like, you know, speaks all, you know, he's all like, it's the greatest thing ever. You know, I can't do him, but, um, but they didn't hate him because he lied. They hated him because he, he told the truth. Cause he said, cause 
Democrats didn't want him to be pro-life. Democrats don't want you to lower corporate income tax. Cor uh, they don't want you, you know, basically to get people out of poverty. I know that sounds bad. <laughs> you know, they, they need people impoverished to vote for them. So they say, we'll help you, okay? And which never comes. Anyway, so, um, yeah, they hated him for that. But I didn't like him at first because I was like, this guy's this guy's not a real Republican. He turned out to actually be more Republican than the people before. I was like, huh, I was wrong. You know, personality aside, he did put people on the bench that I wanted on there. And I was afraid, that was my biggest fear is that he wouldn't do that. But I, I, I you know, he, I, it was like, well, Hillary Clinton, I know, is pro-abortion up to the day you give birth. Right? So I couldn't vote for that. Anyway, so we get to the election, and of course, how do like presidential elections happen? Well, that Tuesday, you go in, you cast your vote, right? And on that, uh, and when you go into the voting booth, uh, here in Texas, they get a little dial, right? You have to type in, a, a, I think, a four-digit code, beep, 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 and that's your code saying, then you, you start the thing and you, um, you, you vote for your president, you vote for all the, what's called the down ticket, right? Because there are other people on the ballot. You not only have um, the president, you'll have congressmen, but then you have state, city, and local officials who are also up for election. And those are important. Why are those important? Because they're the closest to us. They're the closest to you. And those are going to affect you the most, uh, the most right away. And uh, in cities like Houston, Dallas, New York, uh, it's weird because they are generally governed almost wholly and entirely by Democrats. Now, why is this? Because Republicans are horrible at getting the vote out and they're, they're horrible about local elections. Democrats are awesome at getting the vote out and they're awesome about local elections. If the Republicans could take a page from these guys, they'd probably win some city elections and local elections, but they don't. So it's pretty interesting. You'll take note, all the major cities are really governed by Democrats. Is it possible there are more Democrats living in the major cities? Probably, yes. Uh, but on top of that, they, the Democrats are just better at it. They're just better at getting the vote out. Um, and that's something good. That's a, I mean, that's, that's something good to say. All right, so we talked about uh, the Electoral College, correct? Can you tell me what the Electoral College is? I think it's a voting system in America. But, You're uh, correct. It is a voting system yeah, in America. Yeah, whereby uh, the, the, the people, the person who becomes the president is determined by the vote of the Electoral college. It is not the pop. It is not uh, the popular vote where we take everybody's vote mm -hmm. and just assume America is one whole thing and go. Who if you get one more vote out of the entire population than the other guy gets, you're the president. Because we don't run it that way. America runs it state by state. You try to win your state's electors. So each state has the number of electors in it and, uh, that is determined by the number of representatives and senators. So if your state has two House members, right? And every state has two senators, how many electoral votes would you have? Yes, exactly. I think Texas has 36, okay? That would be 34 districts, congressional districts, and two, two senators, all right? You need 270 electoral votes to win the presidency, okay? Now, what's interesting here is, well, there are lots of things that are interesting. 
some states because the Constitution tells it is the states, it is the state's responsibility to, to elect these electors, right? Some states are winner take all. So if the Republicans win the majority in Texas, guess what? All 36 electors from Texas go towards the Republican candidate. All right? That's a winner take all. So Texas is a major state, I mean, major win for the Republicans. And it is a major battle, it's not battleground state, it's actually deep dark red, but the Democrats are desperately trying to turn uh, Texas back to blue. Historically, Texas was a blue state, okay? And uh, so, they spend a lot of money trying to get Texas to go back just to get them to win those electoral votes, okay? Some states are not winner take all. That means you get the number of electors based on the number of votes you have in the state versus the other. So the electors in that can be broken up. What do you think would be better? Do you think it should be winner take all or do you think it should be uh, broken up evenly? Say if there were 10 electors, I'm just throwing that out there and you won 60% of the vote, that means you get six electors and the other gets guy gets four electors. I think that would be better. You think that would be better? Is that would represent more what people want rather than, well, no? No, I'm not, no. Okay. <laughs> no, don't let me change your mind just because I go, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, it would be more of a straight democracy. Um, but are we running for the states or are we running for, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, let's, is it a republic or is it a democracy that we're running here? A uh, democracy? No, we are not a democracy. You're a representative oh, republic. Republic. Okay. Uh, but it's up to the states to determine this, okay? Um, what would that do to California? And their huge number of electoral votes, which I think is 56. That would break California up and you would find that uh, California would probably be about either 30 to 70%, right? You take that, those 56 votes and you take 30% of those, right? That'd probably be about 15 votes, I think, right? Is that to your math, right? 15, 16 votes. And uh, that would go to the Republican Party. And I'm sure the Democrats are like, well, we don't want to give all this to them, right? We want all 56 going to our guys. And in Texas, we're like, well, we want all 36 of ours going to our guys, uh, the Republicans, right? Of course, the Democrats here in Texas are probably thinking otherwise, right? But I think Nebraska, if I'm correct, I think it's Nebraska is, kind of breaks it down. Uh, we'll look at an electoral map and you can tell me. I, I actually have one. I don't know if I brought it with me. I'm pretty sure I took it off my... Here, let me see if it's... Nah, nah, nah. I have my notebook, but with my thing here. Yeah, no, I took it off. But I, I had printed it for us. And... Uh, no, I did. I brought it. What do you know? So, uh, yeah, I was correct. Uh, California has 55, not 56. Um, but it doesn't say which ones. Um, I think it is Nebraska, though, I'm pretty sure. Um, but if you take a look, uh, there are 538 total uh, votes. D.C. gets three. They're not a state, but they still get three. Let me see this here. This is, if you want to pass that around, that's how it ended up in 2016 for Trump's victory. Um, so just remember, the presidential, the presidential election, you win by state, okay? The states are what determines it, all right? How come this is not considered a state? This is not a state. It's a district of Columbia. 
Now, the Democrats right now are trying to make it a state. They're trying to annex it, right? Why do they want to do that? More votes. They want more votes. They want two more senators, right? And they want uh, congressional seats because they know that they, 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 they do surveys. They know, they know uh, where their population lands on the political spectrum. And it is by and large a, a, a far left democratic a group of people that live out there in the District of Columbia, and they go, we could get uh, some some House seats and we could get two more senators, thus ensuring us more power, okay? The goal of the Democrats is to create a one-party system in America like California, where any opposition party really has no power whatsoever. Like the Republicans in California have no power, okay? Because they're they're just so vastly outnumbered. That's the goal of the Democrats right now. Okay. That's why they want to bring in Puerto Rico. That's why they want to bring in D.C. so that they could have more. And that's why they want to expand the number of seats, uh, uh, justices on the Supreme Court. They're, they're, they've got the power right now to do certain things and they're using it. And they're trying to ensure that they have power permanently now. It's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty amazing power grab that they're pulling. But back to elections. So when we go to the uh, congressmen, though, they're not voted on electorally because it's not state by state. We are voting for our own electors. I mean, our own representatives. And there are two ways we we like our representatives to be. We either like them to be uh, people who we delegate to them what we want, right? And if they don't do what we want, well, then we get them out of there. Okay, we have a list of demands and you are either upholding our demands, so to speak, or you are not. You're either representing our will or you are not. Okay, and we got an objective measure. But then there's another way to approach it where they actually are more of um, representative in the way where they're gonna lead us and it's more of a leadership model where we trust them. And we go, you're a good guy. Who would you rather have in there? Some guy you trust or just some guy you go, look, this is what I want. You do what I want. And if you don't do what I want, we're getting here, getting you out of here. The second one. You want the second one where you, okay, you like that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy too. Okay, so I agree with you. Okay, so very good. So now, uh, what are more important to you in the short term? What, which elections are gonna affect you more in the short term? City, local, or federal? Local and city. Okay, which ones are going to affect you more in the long run? Federal. Okay, those are the ones. And so they could really mess with you. They could both mess with you in the long run. But uh, local is right here, right now. So when you vote, uh, now, who's in charge of policing? The President of the United States or the mayor? The mayor? Well, they're both executive branches. Right? Uh, the federal government's federal law, okay? And the cities are city and state. And then you have state laws, right? Such as the sheriff. So they have jurisdictions, but the mayors are generally in charge of the police department of the city. So HPD, who's in charge of HPD? Who's our mayor? Turner, Turner Mayor Sylvester Turner. Okay, now he'll come up for election, right? And if you like what he does, you'll vote for him. And uh, will, pe will people in the great state of Texas all be able to vote for Mayor Turner? Yeah, only in Houston. Yes, only in Houston, right. <clears throat> so you need to be a kin and aware of when and where these elections take place, okay? Why is it important to know this? So if you don't know it, you're not going to vote. And if you don't vote, you don't have a say in how your city is governed. What are some of the issues in Houston that we need to deal with? Flooding highways. Flooding highways? Okay. Um, highways are generally federal. Yeah. Okay. That's federal infrastructure. They will pay for our highways. But what about our city streets? Yeah, you drive down Westheimer much? <laughs> you might as well, <laughs> off-road, right? 
Uh, it's, the streets are really bad. Uh, trash pickup is an issue. If, uh, if you had an issue with that, water rights are an issue. Those are, um, those are things. Uh, police is an issue. What about the homeless? What about crime? Is there crime around your, where you live? You're like pointing somewhere. Yeah, I have a question about the homeless. Like, why doesn't the government have like some type of program that helps the homeless people? Because it costs money. So if you are sleeping on the streets, instead of just helping them out? Well, again, you got, how do you, how, the way, what is the means by which the government city in this case would get the money for it? First, they have to vote, right? On some kind of legislation, the city council would, right? Say, we're going to, build a homeless shelter let's say what happens when that homeless shelter after you build it is full you get them all in but are all of the now is it fair that people who are on drugs and alcohol are being supported by you the taxpayer for free they just go live in a shelter and it's cool now don't get me wrong that i don't want to be so cold-hearted because i know a lot of these are the people are uh are handicapped mentally or physically and can't work. Others are, I don't want to say gypsies, but like that. They're, they basically are traveling, you know, homeless people who live off other people's money. They, they panhandle to, to make money and they don't, that's just their lifestyle and they're into it. There's some people who do that. So some are legit, some are not, okay? Should panhandling be illegal? Not the illegal, but some of them, most of them are, like, don't really have those serious offenses. Do you like it when uh, people come up knocking on your car window for money? No, because I believe that they could find a way to make money, like, like selling like water bottles. Like I understand that. Like you know how they do that. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. like it's like you're just asking yeah, for well. it when you could actually be working or doing something. Okay, so these are issues. This, this is just an issue I'm talking about here. Okay. <laughs> It's the same issue with the unemployment. I don't really think the government should be sending money to give people unemployment benefits. They should create jobs and send them to jobs. Well, then what you're doing is creating a bureaucracy that continually... Uh, uh, so gov one thing the government does not do well is run a business. So if you say the government should give them jobs, give them jobs doing what? Yeah, create a business to give them jobs. Businesses create jobs, right? Governments create bureaucracies, okay? Do you know what a bureaucracy is? No, no. We're gonna talk about a bureaucracy. We'll talk about that next time. Bureaucracies are like um, government jobs that basically exist to do the administrative work of the government. So let's say I go to the VA, there are people sitting at computers entering data right? Filling out forms, making sure regulations are fulfilled, correct? They call that red tape, okay? And whenever governments create laws, they have to create a bureaucrat to make sure those regulations get, get, you know, followed, all right? And so government jobs do not create money. They cost money. Does that make sense to you? Because they're not creating a product. They're just fulfilling a bureaucratic role of making sure red tape is gone through, that the administrative process has been taken. Does that make sense to you again? Okay. So they don't, they're not creating a product. They're not saying, for example, the post office is supposedly kind of a service, right? That we pay for, but it never makes money. So there's competition out there, UPS, FedEx and all them. They make money. And if they're not making money, what happens to them? They go out of business. What happens if the U.S. Postal Service doesn't make money? They just take it from the taxpayers. Right? So they don't have to make money to exist. So they cost money. So those jobs you're talking about, why doesn't the government just give them jobs? First, they'd have to create a job. Okay? Which means that would take a job away from somebody who's not homeless, who is employable, who's not an alcoholic, insane, lazy, or handicapped. Okay, because healthy people in a healthy economy are not homeless. Okay? 
If you are homeless, it is a very short time that you are homeless if you're health healthy. And I mean mentally healthy and moral, okay? The healthy, moral, sane person would get a job, get off the street, and start working towards something. The person who is either lazy, infirmed, or insane, or an alcoholic or a drug addict who can't keep a job, those are the ones who are on, uh, on the streets all the time. So the government creates a job for them, what kind of job could they do? Pick up trash? But don't we already have trash collectors for that? I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I believe the, the private sector is the best option for that. That's what churches are for. They really, and they need to unleash that power because that's where the... That's where these people are really going to be helped, in my opinion, is through the private industry. The public doesn't do anything but cost us money, taxes. That's all right. Now, this was supposed to be, and it got we got a lot of discussion on campaign. We didn't talk about campaigns, but we did talk about elections, right? Uh, when we get to the city, those are the type. Look at me. Those are the types of issues that we deal with with city elections. What are we going to do with the, the homeless? What are we going to do with our water rights? What are we going to do with criminal criminals? You know, we got prostitution all up and down the streets here. That's human slavery going on still to this day, human trafficking, all right? What are we going to do about, uh, you know, uh, gosh, there, there could be, a, oh, education issues, right? Those are local. Zoning. How would you like a high-rise building in the middle of your, your neighborhood, wherever you live, and let's pretend you live in a suburb, right? And they're gonna build a, a 40 story high rise and you're like, 40 stories, you know, how many people are gonna move into this 40 story building? And then when they do, what's that gonna do to my traffic? You're like, I don't want this. And so zoning issues would be, have, have to do with your, your city officials and all that, okay? Not just city officials, but they have, they have you know, things you would vote for. All right, we can talk more about that next time. Today is Tuesday. We'll talk more on uh, Thursday. I want you to come here on Thursday if you can. Uh, be prepared. I just put up a little quiz and be prepared for several more quizzes just to start popping up because we only got a couple weeks left. Go ahead. Uh, last time we, we had a quiz, I, I said it was, it was saying midterm. Yeah. But then I, I think you removed it. What? Uh, did, you, did you remove the quiz, the midterm quiz? Remote? Yeah, remove it. But how, how I didn't remove it, but it may have gone away because of it may have timed out if you didn't get to it in time. Oh. Do you need me to reset it? Yeah. I will. Email me so I, I don't forget. Okay, good. Um, We're still uh, recording here. If you got that uh, electoral map, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why.